Welcome. Um, this question says a five kilogram sheet of metal is positioned as shown using the method of calculus as shown in physics class. What is the x coordinate of its center of mass? Show that its x coordinate of its center of mass is two meters. And this is a three meter long, three meter by four meter triangle. So let's draw it again. I don't like using the diagrams that I'm given. They're never big enough and the Often the angles are not correct. And this goes up and just like that. And we know this is three meters in the x direction and this is four meters in the y direction. And we're only interested in the x coordinates. So although it is a two dimensional shape, we're gonna work out our distances along the along the x axis. And it's a center of mass problem, so the, I suppose the first thing I have to do is, is kind of think about what the equation is for the center of mass and x center of mass for a. This is a distributed mass because it's not discrete little uh, uh, particles of mass. It's a, a continuous rod or a sheet or a cylinder or something. It's a, it's a three dimensional or in this case a two dimensional shape. Um, continuous shape and the equation is 1 over the total mass times the integral of r dm and because I'm only working in the x direction I'm gonna basically change this for x dm doesn't help me much as it turns out because I don't know how to integrate x with respect to dm and so the first thing I have to do is, is sort that out and the way I sort that out is I, I think about the basic physics of the situation and I imagine the slice. Remember what the dm is? The dm is a, a little bit of mass. And there's the little bit of mass I'm thinking about. It has a total mass dm. And now, uh, we can get that little bit of mass if I say dm is equal to and in this case we're going to say the area density times the little bit of area and that would be the slice so dm is going to equal and the, the, area dense, the, the, the area density is the total mass, m, divided by the total area. And this is a triangle. So this will be a half. The base, let's call the base x. Now, I've got to be careful now. <laughs> I'm going to leave it as x, but I'm going to make it a big x. This is big x. And this is a big y just to distinguish it from little x's and little y's. Big x is a constant. In this example, it happens to be equal to three meters. The key thing is it's a constant. It's not a variable. And y is a constant. So this, this term here is the area of the total triangle. Now I have to multiply it by this little area. And this little area has a certain width. I didn't draw this. I keep trying to draw it carefully. And there's always issues. So there's my little width. It's the width of the slice. B, the little width, times, and it's the height. I'm kind of assuming that the slices are so thin, there's really next to no difference between the left-hand edge and the right-hand edge. And I'm just going to assume that I can call the height h. And h is the height of the slice. And now I realize there's a bit of an issue here. Because when the slice is way over on the left hand side, h is quite small. And when the slice is over way on the right hand side, h is almost well as big as y is. And when it's in the middle, it's somewhere in between. So h is a variable. 
and it's a variable which depends upon how far we've moved from the left hand side to the right hand side. That distance, how far we've moved from the left hand side, where my slice is, I'm going to call little x. And so I'm going to say, well, dm is equal to big M over one half big X big Y. We'll put that all as one thing. DX, that's fine. Now I want to get an expression for H, which is in terms of what my, you know. Uh, overall variable that I want to work in which is X and it turns out well it's a straight line isn't it and just as I say Y is equal to MX plus B I can say H is equal to well my slope is big Y over big X and my x position is, in fact, little x. And I go through the origin plus 0. Now, what that means is, instead of writing this variable h down, I can put down y over big x times little x. Okay, let's do one little bit more of simplifying. <laughs> and uh, let's do uh, a different color. So let's have a look. My Y cancels out my Y. And well, that's about it. I suppose my half can go as a two on top. So I can say this will be two. That's the half going on top, big M. The big x's multiply each other, so it's x squared. My little x comes inside dx. So that is the expression of dm in terms of constants and x's, which is what I want. Let me put a line around here so because I'm going to do another column of work. And then let's continue. So I'm going to say, well, x centra mass is equal to 1 over m, that's from the original equation. Integral of x, that's from the original equation. And then I'm going to say, let's do this in a different color. Rather than dm, I'm going to say 2 big M over big X squared times little x dx. So, okay, let's take out all the constants to the front. So 1 over m, and my 2's are constant, and my m's are constant, and my big x squared is a constant and that leaves the integral now don't forget there's a x there and there's an x there dx so now I pause and I just make sure I did that right so I'll get 2m on top I get m x, big x squared underneath and then I have little x squared dx ah. Very nice, I can even simplify a little more. That M of course goes with that M, so why not? X centra mass is equal to 2 over X squared times the integral of little X squared DX. And this is going to equal 2 over big X squared Well, that's going to be x cubed over 3. I do the integration and I need to find limits. And now I look. 
and I say, well, from where I start counting distances, how far is the first slice? And the first slice is just no meters away. I'm counting distances from the origin, and the, the, the x begins at the origin. So the, the nearest slice will be zero meters away from where I start counting from. And where I end counting from, well, the last slice would be, let's keep in letters, big X away. So when I do my X centra mass, what I find is I get 2 over big X squared. And I'm going to get big X cubed over 3 minus 0 cubed over 3. My lines are running into each other. I'm sorry about that. Which equals 2. The 2 big X divided by 3. So X central mass is oops it is <laughs> I was doing so well. Let's get rid of that. It's going to be 2 over 3 of the x length, 2 thirds of the way along the x axis, which in this case equals 2 over 3 of, well, it's 3 meters along horizontally, which equals 2 meters, which is what I was told to prove. So there we have it. Let's let's just recap what we did. We did a, a diagram that frankly is big enough to be able to put an awful lot of information on as I think through this. And then what I did was I, I said, well, this is a center of mass problem for a distributed mass. So I wrote down my expression. I know the expression. And then I recognized that I don't know how to integrate x with regard to dm, so I need to change my dm into something uh, that involves dx. So I recognize, going back to the physics, that my little bit of mass, dm is not just a symbol, it means the little bit of mass in my slice. My little bit of mass is equal to, well, in this case, it's definitely a, a, a it's certainly not a one-dimensional shape, it's, it's a two-dimensional shape. So it's going to be an area density multiplied by the little bit of area contained in the slice. And so dm is equal to, and I'm, I'm saying, well, it's the mass of the entire triangle over the area of the entire triangle. And I'm not putting numbers in, I'm, I'm keeping letters because I know things will cancel. And then I turn my attention to the dm and I say, well, it's a bit like a rectangle. It's pretty narrow, so it's going to be dx is my width and h is my height. I'm still not done, though, because h, little h is not a constant. It's a variable, and it's the variable that depends upon my little x. That is how far I've worked my way along the shape, how far I am from where I measure distances in the x direction how far I am from the origin. And so I got to work out an expression for h in terms of x. And well, it's a straight line. So I invoke y equals mx plus b. x is just coincidentally x in this case. So h is equal to the slope, which is big Y over big X, multiplied by how far I am along the x-axis, which is little x, and there's no y-axis intercept, so b equals 0. I substitute that in for h, and then simplify. And I end up with an expression for dm in terms of dx. And I can substitute in. And then the rest is kind of math, isn't it? There's, there's basically, you just rearrange, take all the constants out of the integral. You do the integral. I suppose the next bit of a visualization is you have to look at the shape to figure out what your limits are. And my first slice is right on the origin, so the limit would be zero. And my last slice would be as far on the x-axis as big x. So 
So there are my limits. And then I substitute in, do the integration with respect to my limits, and I get the generic answer. And the generic answer is that for a triangle like this, the center of mass along the x-axis will be two-thirds of the way along the center of mass. Not half of the way along like it was for the rod. For a triangle shape like this, it would be two-thirds of the way along. And then, um, and that's got nothing to do with the, the actual dimensions, the length of the x and the length of the y that I picked. It's just, it's always two-thirds of the way along for a triangle which gets starts off at zero at the left and goes and has its peak at the right-hand edge. For a right triangle like this, position like this, it's going to be two-thirds of the way along the, the x distance that the triangle occupies. Uh, and then so when I put numbers in, I get the answer of two for this. So it's a nice skill. It's, uh, it's basically making you go back and justify changing how you change dm into dx. And it's all physics when you think about it. There we have it.